any time that I hear it, it's just pure shock. Like, here we are, another young person being gunned down by officers of the law. And you sort of feel helpless because then you're like, what happens now? How do we go up against them? You know, they are the law. And so, you know, after hearing this time and time again, I just felt like we have no choice but to go to the streets and protest. You just reach a breaking point and once you're there, I mean, you feel there's no turning back. The streets is the solution. We are marching on West Lawson towards the police barricade at Ferguson. Yeah. Ferguson PD, as you can see the crowd, very large crowd. Here, two parts of the crowd. One part met at Canfield Green, other part met on West Florida, and the two were meeting all here in West Florida in the city of Ferguson. So let's see what happens as we approach the barrier. I just said enough is enough. I have to go there to help the people in Ferguson. And I mean, seeing those images across the TV screen of them throwing gas bombs on people, tear gas, I just, I couldn't take it that inside that did something to me. I mean, we're using tear gas on protesters. At most times, peaceful protesters. It was crazy. Where was the outrage? Americans should have been upset at seeing something like that. People being gassed. I mean, it, it's insane. The mood of the march, uh, I mean, people were, people were really strong and they felt, they felt good and they, I mean, they really felt good in spirit and they really felt that they were there to make a difference. And um, I, I really, you know, I felt great being there because History isn't just something that you read about in the books, you know. It, I was there. We were there. We were making history. Why should we obey them trying to intimidate us with the National Guard? Why? We have inspired people all over the world. We have inspired people all over the world. We need to set the terms. The people set the terms. Not the National Guard. There were people from all over, people from all over the United States coming there uh, of all races, all socioeconomic backgrounds, and there was a sense of camaraderie. It was empowering to be there and to hear hundreds of people fist in the air, yelling, hands up, don't shoot, you know, no more racism. I mean, it was empowering. Yeah, my eyes are beginning to get watery or hurting, whatever. Another one thrown back. They're throwing it back. Ferguson, Missouri, North St. Louis County. Tear gas on the street, more canisters coming. They should note that this is a common scene in Palestine and uh, St. Louis County Police and others have trained with the Israeli uh, Defense Forces and uh, causing some controversy in some quarters. I'm, I'm becoming more and more socially aware of things that are going on, you know. I stand and help fight with the people of Palestine. I protest with them. And that was one of the things that I saw that really encouraged me. The people of Palestine were telling people in Ferguson how to cover themselves to fight off the tear gas. I met the gentleman who picked up that um, 
tear gas bomb or grenade. And he said that he wasn't throwing it at the police. He said he was throwing it out of the way because young babies, young children were there with the moms uh, marching in protest. So, I mean, that just, I have that image just stuck in my mind forever. You know, these were people in Ferguson, Missouri. It was like they were in an army. I mean, like they were fighting with the army. More tear gas being fired at the protesters. The officers move forward under the protection of body armor, military vehicles, and tear gas. It's militarization of our local police forces. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's not a war. These are citizens, taxpaying citizens. And we have every right. We have every right to walk up and down the street. We have every right to be in the parks. I mean, those are our freedoms, our constitutional freedoms. These people had nothing. And you have tanks and bullets, rubber bullets and gas. It's, there's no answer for that. And this is what you show the rest of the world. This is how the American police forces feel about citizens. And with the militarization of the police force, it's more like control of the people. They want to control us every, every move, every single aspect of what freedoms we have. They just, you know, they want to control that. And, you know, you're not safe, especially if you're a young African-American male. You're just not safe. We're in the city of Ferguson, sir. No, you're not. Yeah. Are we still in Kenlock? Are we still in Kenlock? Kenlock. Don't feed me no bullets yet. Well, what's the problem? What did we do wrong? What's the problem? What do you think the problem is? I don't know. What's the problem? Take them out of here. Oh, oh. This is not an area for them to be right now. Why not? Who who cannot get, get in Kenlock? You're videotaping me. I'm going to tell you what. Take it out of here. Well, what did we do wrong? Yeah, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm saying you can't. I don't want you here at this time of night. Kenlock's not America. We have no right to be here. Have a good day, sir. Okay? What's your name, officer? Don't worry about it. Take off. What's your name, officer? Take off. So we don't have a right to be in, in Kenlock. You're illegally parked. You want me to tow it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, continuous harassment. You are always being harassed you're always being pulled over and the thing is is you don't feel like you belong you don't feel like you're a citizen you don't feel like I wake up and I say you know what the Constitution wasn't meant for me the Constitution wasn't made for me how am I to feel when I wake up knowing that anytime I walk out of the house if they pull me over if they decide to question me, they can. And if they decide to shoot and kill me, they can. I fear for my son. I have a nine-year-old son that I have to raise here in the city of Chicago. And I see it all the time, day after day. If the detectives want to snatch a man of color and plant drugs on him, he can do it and get away with it. If they decide that they want to shoot him because maybe he gave an answer that they didn't like, he, they can do it and get away with it. And it's just, it's a fear. You, you begin to fear the police and you begin to dislike the police. And you just, you, you know, you just don't feel like you belong. Tell me how do you plan on ha giving jobs to all of these teachers that are being displaced? How? On top of that, you are sending a message to African-American children saying that you, you don't matter, your word doesn't matter, you don't matter, and we'll close your school whenever we want. I began getting active with the uh, 50 school closures here in the city of Chicago. Um, up until that point, you know, I had been living my life one way, you know, go out, vote, send your kids to school, work really hard, and you'll be the best that you can be until I started seeing that. No matter what I do, because of the skin that I was born in, whatever community I live in will always be a target. Mm -hmm. My children's school, we, were, we are being treated as guinea pigs. Mm. 
if they want to come in to uh, a poverty stricken community, they come in and they flip it inside out, upside down. They destabilize the community. They close the schools, the hospitals, the mental health clinics. These people can't pay for their homes. They can't pay their rent. They can't feed their kids. It's just, I mean, we're suffering. And to keep us, you know, in that 99% of the uh, unwealthy people, to keep us there, those are the things that they have to do. Yeah. They can't allow our children to go to school and get good educations and become smart and start making change in the world. That 1% has to stay rich. And how else do you do that? By destabilizing these communities. Go in, close their schools. You know, close their schools. They don't, they don't need schools. Uh, hospitals, oh no, when we shoot them, we don't want them to have uh, an emergency a room to go to. No, we, we want to stop that. So, I mean, this is all, all of this is it, it's hand in hand, hand in hand. And we just have to, we have to come out of our shells. We have to get past the facade of what they want us to believe and to just see what's truly there.